Howdy, partner. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. It's time to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero. So, thanks for joining me today. And today we're going to look at this particular function. Now, the zeros of the graph, remember, are the locations on the graph where the function crosses or touches the x-axis. All right. So why don't we actually plot this first? Let's just get a feeling of what it looks like. All right. And then we'll do all the algebra to kind of get us to the uh, get us to the end goal. So just plot it. Ready? X squared. So just type in X squared. Open the parentheses. Then do X squared plus 4X plus 4X plus 4. Close the parentheses and hit graph. All right. So we kind of have this now. Your window might not be zoomed in this much. Go to zoom and then I'm going to hit sit. Uh, six for standard, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom now in. So you can go to zoom and then hit number two and hit enter. All right. And what we now have here is we have a nice little picture, all right, of our graph. And I'll keep it nice and big and then we'll reduce it a little bit. Um, but it, it appears that the graph here, the function, will touch the x axis in two places, right? One place here. And one place here. Now we can already see the values basically. Each one of these tick marks represents a unit of one. When you move to the left, that's right, negative one and then negative two. So it looks like we should have a value there, right at x is equal to negative two. All right. And then we should also have a value, it looks like it crossed about zero, right? Now, how do I know it's exactly zero or about zero? Well, that's where the algebra is going to come in to help us, all right? So there's going to be x is equal to now uh, zero. So these would be the what's called zeros. I know that gets a little confusing because it's like x is equal to zero and that's a zero, right? Zero, 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 zero. But the idea is, remember, the zeros are going to be the x values, and you can write that down if you like. The zeros are going to be the x values that produce a zero value for the function. In other, and the zero value, remember, is when y is equal to zero. Remember, f of x is the same thing as saying y. I know many people don't like saying f of x. It's like easier to say y. They both mean the same thing. So if you want to do that substitution all the time, please feel free. But it's when the y value is equal to zero, all right? And that is the places where the graph will then touch or intersect the x-axis. All right, so we have two zeros in this problem. Now it says to give the multiplicity of each zero. Now it turns out multiplicity, there's a common pattern. Why is there a common pattern to certain multiplicities? I have a video, all right, exactly explaining all that stuff. If you're curious and you want to understand why, which I highly suggest you do, check out the link in the description below. I'm going to leave you, well, a link to that video. All right. But uh, odd multiplicities here cross the x-axis and even multiplicities will bump the x-axis. In other words, the multiplicity is a value of the zeros that can tell us the behavior of it. So if you notice here, see the graph, how it comes down and it gives a little bump it comes down and it bumps, all right? This I'm gonna to expect to have an even multiplicity. Now don't confuse that with the value. You might say, oh, is that an even value two? Right? I know it's negative two, but you know, absolute value, is that an even? No, it has nothing to do with that, N absolutely zero. All right, zero to do with that, nothing. Um, notice though here also how the graph comes down and it bumps it, it doesn't intersect, like it doesn't cross that value at zero. I should expect another even multiplicity there, okay? Now, what, how do I find that out from the algebra and from, that's what exactly what we're going to do. All right. But that's how you kind of picture this. All right. So now let's take this. All right. We'll reduce this down in size a little bit. We'll keep it off to the side. So we have a nice little picture. Actually, you have it up here. So you know what? We don't even need it anymore. Right. All right. Let's just delete it. And let's now do the algebra. So the first thing is when I want to find the zeros, I want to basically put this into factored form. All right. Now, this is already somewhat in factored form. I have a factor here, x squared, multiplied then by some other crazy factor. I'll call that b. Anytime you have something like this, you can find the zeros, meaning the values of x that produce the overall value of zero for the function. Uh, the reason being is because if this is zero, if I could figure out a way to get x squared equal to zero, if I could figure out what x has to be in order for that term to be zero, what that means then is that this whole thing is zero, because zero times whatever the heck is in here is zero, right? A lot of zeros, zero, 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 all right? S similarly, right, if this factor could be somehow equal to zero, in other words, x squared plus 4x plus 4, if that could be equal to zero, well, I could care less what this is. This could be negative 2,987,192. And guess what? 
zero multiplied by whatever number I just said is going to be zero. Right. So what do we do? Well, what we do is we have two math equations now that we're going to solve, right? So to solve this for x, you would take the square root of both sides. Square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 0 is just 0. It's not obvious. You know, when you take square root, I say think of plus and minus, but plus 0 and minus 0 doesn't really kind of mean anything, right? So it's just 0. Now, on this hand, you might say, oh, all right, this looks familiar. Is that a quadratic? And I'm going to say, yes, it absolutely is a quadratic, right? It is a quadratic. And how do you factor that? Now, you can use, by the way, a program in your calculator, if you'd like. So watch, I, oh, actually, take, I'll leave also a link here for that uh, quadratic formula program that I have in this calculator. You're going to love it. Just watch the video. It'll take, two, it'll take like four minutes, and you'll be able to do all this. All right, so watch. I'm going to execute my quad program, and I have to plug in my A value. All right, now remember, the A value here is the value in front of the X squared, which is a 1. So I hit 1, Enter. Then my B value is the next one here, so it's going to be the 4, positive 4. So just plug in 4, hit Enter. All right, and then... The C value is the last value without the X, so that's also a 4, hit enter. And look, it gives you the values of X. Negative 2 and, well, negative 2, it gives you both, right? It turns out that they're both equal. And wait a minute, negative 2, isn't that what we said over here, ladies and gentlemen? Hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right? So you can find that now in your calculator, or you can remember the rules that you have to find two numbers that multiply to positive 4 and that add to positive 4. And you would then realize that, oh, right, to factor that, it's going to be a positive 2 and a positive 2, right? Okay. Now, how do you solve this? Again, I have this in factored form. So this is like my A multiplied by my B. So I set each of these things then equal to 0 because whenever they are 0, the whole value would go to 0, right? So I go, I break that up into two parts now, x plus 2 equals 0. And then I have x plus 2 equals 0 and subtract the 2 on over from both sides. x is equal to negative 2. Oh my goodness, that's what the calculator told me. That's what the graph told me. And now this hopefully should be making sense. Right, so those are the values. Those are the, those are the uh, zeros, right? And that's how we find it algebraically now. But we found that also graphically before, right? So hopefully that's starting to make a little bit of sense, right? I'll go back to the graph. Okay, there's the graph, right? There's negative 2 over there, and there's 0. Now, last but not least... We have to find the multiplicity of each, okay? So with this one, what I want to do now, so I have to get this into factored form, okay? Now, if you look here, you have a factor over here of x squared, right? And whatever the power is of that factor will be its multiplicity, okay? So in other words, remember I found the x value of 0, right, to be one of the zeros of the function, meaning the value of x that gave the overall value for the function of zero. And I now know the multiplicity there is going to be equal to two. Now remember, I said that even multiplicities bump, odd multiplicities will cross. So this is an even multiplicity, we should expect it to bump. And look, it does bump at zero, it goes, boop, it bumps, right? Boop. Now, that takes care of that zero. But how about the zero of x being equal to negative 2? Now, we should also expect that to be even, but what is the value? Now, here's the tricky part. You can't really look at this per se and find it. Okay, you can't. Even though this is x squared, this is not in fully factored form. Okay? What is in fully factored form is this right here. This right here is in fully factored form. Okay? Now, if I had to take this particular step, right, let me just pull this out of the work. All right, if I had to take this out of the work, and what I did was I now realized, well, these two binomials are exactly the same thing, right? So it would be the same thing as saying x plus 2 squared equals 0, right? That would be the same exact thing. So what I realized that in this place here, I could have written x plus 2 squared. Now, this is the power this is the power we need to focus on, the power of the factor, okay? The power of the factor that will give us the multiplicity. So what's the power of this factor? Well, it's 2. So the multiplicity here of this 0, because remember that 0 was gotten from this factor, is equal to 2. And that was even. 
And we should expect even values to bump. And look, it does bump at the negative two. All right, so that's kind of how it all works. I know this might seem like a lot and a little frustrating and like the words we're using zeros all over. Find the zeros of the function and zero, right? We also have a zero then x being equal to zero for the zero value. It's, it's, it's a little complex. It's a little complicated with all the lingo, but that's why it's essential to practice. Okay, practice, practice, practice. And guess what? We got you covered. We have thousands of problems out there, thousands dedicated just to help you practice. All right. So see one, do one, and then teach one, right? That's the old medical school model. Okay. See one, do one, teach one. So you saw one, try to do one now, and then see if you can teach one of your classmates to do one. All right. It's a great way to learn. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and like and subscribe if you can. And even recommend our channel to maybe some of your classmates. If we helped you out, we might be able to help them too. Thank you so very, very much.